Recording started. Hi. <laughs> Welcome today to our program. My name is Jim Martini. I'm the business education trainer at Los Angeles Valley College. And really running this program is the CEO of the A2 Learning Management System, Vivi Samir. And the two of us like to talk a lot, so we're going to be fighting over uh, airtime here, so this could give it a lot of good play. But, but I'd like us to start off. How many teach online? How many different? All How many would like to someday? How many would like to have a hybrid class online? There's one there, yeah. But um, we, we'd like to welcome you out, and I'm really excited about what we're going to be doing, showing you today. I really think of this as the reintroduction to the Etude system. Etudes for years had, had been known for certain things, a, a bare bones type of program. But I really think now, and I really know now, that we have so many great, great features that you're really going to be amazed at the things that we can do now. Can I answer that for you? Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to have you here. I appreciate you joining us. I see many coming your faces and your faces. Uh, we chose to show you three uh, components of ATUNES that to me uh, really highlight some of the best of ATUNES, um, particularly with student success, uh, learning success. And some of this functionality uh, has been introduced to ATUNES over the last 24 months. And we've received tremendous feedback from faculty and students uh, for it. And we felt that because this conference focuses on distance learning, that it would really be the most appropriate set of tools to highlight and, and show you how it is unique and, and how we help students stay connected with the online environment so that they can be successful. And I see a number of ACUS users here, and uh, I would welcome you to uh, contribute uh, if you do some of these features uh, in our session. So the question, I'm going to just point to you and you can click the space bar here. So the questions we have, every student asks is, how am I doing? How am I doing? And what ATUNES has done is work with this, developing some tools to give the students so they're not lost. And what happens is that having children find that went through college, you know, I always had this vision that when you're 18, you're an adult. Remember that? Mm -hmm. You ever have friends that tell you, God, you're so lucky to be teaching at a college because there, they're all adults. You know? <laughs> and I thought, yeah, 18 year olds enough. I saw my kids go through college and I realized, oh dear Lord. Um, and it's not always easy for students. You know, and they all experiencing a variety of challenges. When I was in college, that was my number one job. The students that I have now, it's like the number four job. Everything from taking care of parents, employment, and so on. They have family problems, work problems, social problems. But the ones that we can deal with are course problems. What goes on in a course that gives them problems of successful completion? Um, they fall behind. They feel alone and isolated. I did a program yesterday about humanizing an online course. And the idea there was an online class is not a correspondence course. And I really work hard. It's a, it's a community. It's a sense of community. How do we of times in a lot of courses that I've seen and my instructors have had, you're alone. You're sitting alone in your bedroom working on a class. Is anyone there? Um, especially, like I said, in an online class. So what we need is a way to stay connected with our students, where they really know someone is there and there can be an interchange and interaction going on. And so that's why Etudes, and that's us, <laughs> and so you do it. I want to show you some of the tools that we have to be able to stay this, uh, connected with our students. Um, I always like this. I use this in a lot of my programs. I never teach my pupils. I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they can learn. And so an LMS has to provide the conditions to create a format, create a system where students can be engaged and learn. And to do that, you need the right tools. So the tools we're going to talk about today is something called a course map, an activity meter, and the in-touch mobile device that we use to keep in contact with our students. So to start off with, we'd like to demonstrate the course map. Right. I'll start with course map. And course map is a tool in all of the sites, and it appears right below uh, home in all of the classes. And it is available for um, 
uh, faculty and for students. And I'll go, go back to the title of the session. What am I doing? What else to be doing? Um, am I behind? How am I, what, um, what have I completed? When things are due, et cetera, et cetera. Every LMS, no matter what you're using, has elements to help students stay in track, stay on, on top of it. However, things are all over the place. I like something you said yesterday in your session. You, I don't even, Just one thing. Well, yeah, one thing. Uh, where you mentioned where uh, when you go into an online class, you wonder, what did you can make? You must remember what you said. When you go to an online class, you, you have to wander to many different rooms to figure out what uh, things um, are happening. And we as instructors also think, well, of course everything is in the syllabus, or of course you've got to go and read first uh, the lesson, and that's where things are, or, or you've got to start with my assignments. Everybody has a different way of teaching, and students go from instructor to instructor, and they really don't know where to begin. It's, it's the way you're talking. It's the real tricky balance where a face-to-face -face course, I can pretty much tell you, okay, do this, do this, do this. I can online class, you have to step back and they do a lot more self-exploration. Right. Right. And, and what I mentioned is like having a party at your house right. and you can't tell everybody, okay, first of all, That's what it was. It's been living and some people wander there and some hang out on the deck and, you know, you really want them in one spot. You know, I, I specifically place food at parties. It doesn't work. They just all come to the kitchen or whatever. And so what's the whole the idea with the LMS? Yes, they can find the grades in the grade book. Yes, they can find due dates in your schedule. And they can they can wander all over, but not everybody likes to click. You tell them, just click around, you'll figure it out. No. Not everybody learns that way. And so that's why we develop course now. It brings all of that together for students. Can I just one more thing? The old way. If a student needed to see the content that you were expecting, they had to click here. If they needed to see what the assignment was, they had to go here. Everything is compartmentalized. If you want to know what all the assignments are, you can go here. If you want to go see all the discussions, you can go here. But wouldn't it be nice to have one place where all of these were together? But beyond that, I feel like I saw a snake oil. Wouldn't you love something that could cure that? You know, many systems. I know Moodle. I know eCollege in the left menu. Um, and Blackboard, they do have, you know, by week, your, your, what are you going to do, a schedule by week. But, well, and you can go to what you need to do from there, but it doesn't necessarily have everything that students need. And, and so let me explain this page for a moment. On the student view of course map, uh, I'll highlight some components, and I actually want to get out and go on a live website on ACES so that that could be a little more interactive than a static PowerPoint. So here is a view of one of my fake students. Notice what the student can see here. They can see the order of everything that you need, you want them to do. And this particular instructor has it organized by unit. I have other instructors that organize it by week um, or theme. And so you, the green check means that the student has completed it. Uh, here is the, the time in progress. They haven't finished it. Uh, there is some alert here, and I don't know what that is. We'll click on any of the icons, and students get information. It eliminates an email to you. What does it mean? When is something to you? They can see an open date, a due date. They can also see activity when they submitted it. There are no questions to you. Did you get my assignment? They can see it was submitted on this particular day and time. Count how many items they completed or submitted. If it was a discussion, one post, one submission for a quiz, they read 17 um, screens, pages of your lesson, um, and a score. So it is uh, not only a schedule, they can also get to the items, they can see their progress, they can also get to your evaluations, to your um, graded items. If there is a score, and you've graded it, they can actually click on it and go directly to your grade book. They can see your comments and they can see the points. And they can get back to course map. Okay? Let me, I'm going to put out. Okay, so notice on the, oops, on the discussion where it says discussion one, there's no green check by it. Correct. If, 
if they select this, it, it would have said you need three posts. You've right. only done one. Yes. So let them know exactly what's still needed for them to do. Why it's not completed yet. Let me get out and go to uh, a student. So here I'm online uh, in iTunes, and I'm logged on as a student. And you can see this, not as a screenshot, but as an actual student. And if I click, so if I put on my mouse on the green check, you can see that it's just complete. Notice here, notice here that the green, green dots uh, quiz has a green check, but it has an alert. So the student is not quite done. If I click on it, actually it says score below the mastery level. Actually, I can click on the info button and it tells me. Score below the mastery level score of 40. You may try again. What that means is the instructor has set it as a prerequisite. You cannot proceed to the rest of the course until you get at least 40 points in this quiz. They have unlimited tries. And then it will let them go further down. So notice here, they can't do anything else. You see this little lock? If they click on that, it says, first, complete the following prerequisite with a score of 40 or higher. And if you're like a student that says, I can now smart the system, I'll go directly to the assignment. When you go there, you can't go to anything further down because you have to do uh, the quiz. You may want to go to um, a discussion and complete a discussion further down. It'll say, please complete that. So um, whether they start from CourseNet or go directly to the other area, it will let them know that somebody their instructor wants you to do better on this one. Okay. And this is what I mentioned before. You can, they can click on their score and go directly to review. Or they can click on um, the score of discussions, and they can go to the feedback. And so each interactive, the course, course map, is your calendar plus your gradebook plus your learning sequences all together. So it depends on how much you want to control what they do. Um, I'm thinking of trying a unit, for example, that has a pretest. They have to do the pretest before the unit opens. Then there'll be a post test at the end. They have to do before the next unit opens. That sort of thing. So I so it depends on how much you want to really guide their path. Right. I want to look on this one more student, and then I want to show you the instructor. But it's really nice. They love seeing green checks. Right. You're going to miss. We actually what what is uh, what is the nice about this is that we have um, we're introducing it to faculty during the training. And in our uh, training, uh, faculty have a practice site to play around with etudes uh, and really uh, learn how to add announcements, how to grade, and all of those things with instructor accounts. But we also have a lead trainer site where there are students in our training and where they get graded. And in that, they have course map and they, they, as they have to do different things, they can see what's going on via course map. And they're like, oh my god. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, what, uh, what I haven't done. Uh, and what I have found is when it's time for them to use a to, to teach, they have seen the benefits firsthand by having been an online student in the system. It's been tremendous. I'm going to show you now the instructor view of course math. There you go. Um, so here are all the items that you saw in the previous page. And, and this is in this editing mode, as you can see. The number one um, priority to me when we introduce this tool, because I have to support 2,600 faculty, uh, was to make it as easy as possible for them to use. I cannot underscore how important that was to me. Because I know faculty are busy people. You have full loads. And if you don't have a full letter and you're part-time, you're teaching on many campuses and, and trying to make ends meet. You have a lot of students. So I wanted to make this as easy as possible uh, to learn. You didn't have to take a course. I actually did seven webinars throughout the year uh, to bring faculty in and, and introduce it to them. 
uh, an hour webinar, a lunch time, bring your lunch, and that's how we introduce it to everyone. So that one, one was easy learning curve. The second was I didn't want them to have to add stuff to another tool. And I have to give credit to my chief architect, Glenn Golden, for coming up with this brilliant idea, borrowing it actually from Steve Jobs from Apple, the idea of thinking. So you don't really add hardly anything in course map. You add a quiz, you add a module, you add a discussion, course map picks it up. You remove it, course map deletes it. It's brilliant. It really is wonderful because you don't have to be adding all these things. Even, even the, the idea of add to course map, a check, that was the initial thought. No, you should to do that. We'll pick it up. If it's important to you, it's in the course, bring it up. And I just want to say from the course map screen, you can change dates, and it goes to the back of your work. Right. So it's really nice for me as a person who likes to see everything together. I can look and see if my dates make sense. Right. Right. Actually, that was the second. We, uh, we merged two requirements from faculty. One was an easy way to change all of my dates across the course on one screen. We have one feature, it's called base date in ASIMS. It's unique. I don't know of any other system that has it, where with one click you change your entire date. So you may need to tweak them a little. And now course map allows faculty in one screen to change. Have a look at your date. So you know, this really should be over here. And you pull it up. And this, you know, it should be over here. Drop and drop. So it's very easy, and you save, and you adjust your date because you now can see them. You know there is last day to drop with a W. Oh, that should be right here. And you save, and you're done. Okay? So that um, uh, allows you to do that. Uh, and in addition to that, insert headers. So really the only thing that faculty add here is headers. So all the items are automatically inserted or deleted if you remove them. So the only thing that you do is actually three things. One is insert headers. If you run your course by weeks or units, then you insert those. Um, the second thing that you do is organize them. Because they choose, I mean, we, we don't know how you want to sequence uh, the path for your learners. So uh, we do the best we can when you first design your course, and we'll go by up and date. So at least we give you some sort of order. And then you can use the drag and drop or the um, drop down menu to organize it. You save it. And the third thing that we you may use is mastery learning. Where, uh, mastery learning or blockers. Where you want, you can sequence your entire course for your students, the path, what they can do and uh, what they can do and if you want them to do something before they move to something else, okay? And, and I have to give faculty credit for that. We had this most complex design and we had a, a user requirements gathering where two years ago we shared the concept of course map. And, and faculty gave us this idea of the blocker column. Brilliant and so simple. You don't have to really um, spend hours explaining it. If you want students to complete something before they move to something else, you make it a blocker. So, if you want them to read your syllabus and accept the syllabus before they move on to anything else in your class, you put a check. If you want them to complete the class quiz before they start do anything else in the course, you make this a blocker. And students will see a prerequisite in the review, and you will tell them, sorry, you can't move on because you haven't completed the things that the instructor wants you to do. Let me show them to you live in, in a day fair. And Dave uh, wanted to take the satisfaction survey. And he said, sorry, first you must complete the following. Prerequisite, read and accept the syllabus. Did you think that Dave is going to write to the instructor and say, how come I can't take the survey? No. There's hardly any emails to that company because they get this information anywhere they go. If they go into modules, and then he <coughs> wants to read the first lesson, he says, sorry, okay, okay, I've got to go read that syllabus. And you go to the syllabus, and back of the office you put at the very bottom, like software agreements, you know. So it says, I have read the syllabus and I accept the terms. Does that mean that they really have? No, but if they give you um, 
uh, any excuses about, oh, I didn't know that you don't accept lay work. But, well, but on such and such day, you accepted the syllabus and you said that you read it. You got that. Yes, and you can make it a blocker. We have many of the may have a blocker. They may be the syllabus that kept the knowledge syllabus quiz, and you must pass it with 80% of better before you move on. So those are the kind of ones they accepted. You will see now that uh, Dave has access to the following items, uh, except below the Greek Gulf quiz, because remember, he hasn't passed that yet with 40% or better. So if I go back to my um, One of the great things we realized was if you do put a blocker on a quiz at the mastery level of like 80%, you have to give them unlimited tries at it. <laughs> because they gave them three tries, they didn't make it, their class is over with. <laughs> so that didn't seem to be fair. We don't, we don't allow actually mastery learning. Um, you cannot set a blocker to unlimited tries with mastery learning unless it is unlimited because we all want to get students stuck. So if you have 80% but you don't have unlimited tries, we, we ignore it, okay? So students, uh, it will be a, they, if it's a blocker, they must at least do it. It doesn't matter how they do, uh, if they get zero or 20 points or whatever, but they must do it. They cannot proceed to the next until they at least do it, participate in the discussion, take the quiz. If they fail, it's a different story, but at least they were there and they tried it. And that's what ensures to you. Uh, what this, what Cornet, this is my last point, does um, also, it is wonderful for uh, self-paced instruction. And that is appropriate for some disciplines. Yes? We often will get requests after a class is done and they, they can't get a hold of the faculty members or students who profess to make your aid. So they ask us to resurrect the archives and we pull out the tracking report from Blackboard. Can this be pulled out, number one, like that resurrected and pulled out as evidence of all the last day of attendance mm -hmm. and if they've been active in the courts or not yes. for the federal reg? The other thing we're getting a question of that as well. Um, can that be pulled out? And also what I thought was cool is if faculty could download that track page as, and, and, you know, we encourage them to download this page and your grade book and archive it in case there's an issue somewhere. You're wonderful because you just gave me a segue to the next part, which is activity meter, and answering your questions is yes to both. You can download it in Excel with all of the data for the entire class or by student with details. And um, yes, all that is saved. And we have a, a three and a half year retention time. Oh, okay. Very generous. And, uh, let me take any questions or question marks before we move on to activity meter. Yes. So how do you edit in the, the um, brief of week one? Uh, you, you know, the, uh, if you're an instructor, it gives you right to the instructor mode. I'm on my page right now. Right. I'm like, how are you doing that? Yeah. Just go immediately from, if you're logged on as an instructor, it literally takes you right into instructor mode. Offering. Everything. Right, but what I'm saying is you added in the, the subtitle of week one. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How I edited uh, course now? You just created a new course. Okay, so here I can say... Uh, Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you see this class icon? Uh, this is what inserts headers. I press on that and I say getting started. There, and you learn something new, getting started. And you can add, you see I added last day to drop with the W or the goodbyes or whatever, you add any of those. Okay, and then I have one other question about course map. Sure. So, um, for whatever reason, it doesn't show my last two modules. It shows everything else in my course, but it doesn't show The me. only reason they wouldn't even show them is because they're invalid. We can talk about that later. Oh, in, and, it, and invalid, that's the only reason I can think of a my, um, it's bigger, you don't see it either, or is it just the students? Uh, I, I don't see the course map myself. Okay, then they must be invalid, meaning they might have bad dates. But the, the end date is earlier than the open date, or who can look at that? Mm -hmm. But that's the only reason I can think of, because there's no other reason why a module wouldn't be. Oh, oh, or if your module has no content, no sections. No content. All right, we'll look at it. <laughs> Any other questions? So I want to move on to the course map where it takes all of the uh, activity meter where all these data 
being pulled and saved for faculty. There we go. Go on. To answer your question, <laughs> that really was. I'll give you. I'll pay you for that afterwards. Um, the second, the second tool that has been it was added last year that has just been incredibly helpful is the activity meter. I now know what my students have done, where they've gone to, how many times they've logged on, the number of posts, and so on. And it gives me some additional. It gives me group data and individual data. This is what I really like. This is if I go. To, this is from a class that I had uh, over the winter. This gives me a summary of enrollment, students enroll, students to drop. Um, this gives me individual students, their first visit, their latest visit, how many times they visited the site. And I can go ahead and, by clicking any of these, I can rank order them. Um, Who accepted the syllabus? So I have that all down here. Uh, the modules they've completed, posts, and assessments that they've done. But what I really like when I turn on to this, um, you start at the beginning of a class. Do you ever have stragglers? The answer is yes. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you have the clue. Up here, I have an early alert monitor. I have six students who have not visited the site in the last seven days. If I click six students, they will come up. <laughs> These are my. I can now send them an individual button here. I can send one email. Um, last year, uh, I was doing a class for Lake Tahoe. For some reason, their online their online program began face to face summer program. Taking it online, we're thinking that they're on the same as the face to face students. Well, after days or two days actually, Tanya, I was able to send them a remind them to let them know that there's a change. Of you would have thought I bought them a present. You know, just giving those, these gentle nudges. Instead of having to sit there and make just one button, one button click, and I. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Thing. But at the end of the semester, I get annoyed now. This is me. When a student has a question on a final project, and I've written a whole module on how to do it, examples, and so on, I can now go to the activity meter and see that they haven't read it. And that's why they're asking me questions. And I can go back and explain, you know, it would be much easier to go find some time to read the module type of thing. But at some point, you begin to do tough up. But this lets me know the green checks, they've done everything. The welcome to the class. They only went to one out of 17 sections, so they haven't come close. This student has only read 7% of the modules. 
So I know that they haven't kept up in their reading and so on. The reason they're struggling now is because of this, and I can I can comment on that. But this gives me an overview of everything that they've done. Okay, as you notice, I can export it and, and, and archive it privately, and it's why it stays up over almost four years within the system. Was the hand? Oh, I was going to say, and that's what the students are Right. Mm -hmm. I want to say something. Exactly when you click on activity meter, you, you get a list of all of your students. When you click on, on a student, you get a their view. Of course not. Think about that for a moment. So at any given time, you know what you can see in their view of their own map. Here's discussions, and I can see on each discussion how many posts there were, how many posts have been total, and so on. Uh, this is the activity for individual students. Oh, hold okay. on. I want to go ahead because there's a couple more. I want to show you a lot of activity meter. Because one of the things that activity meter does that I really appreciate, it allows me to see who has done. So go for discussions. I'm going to go for discussions and let's look at class introduction. Now, this is my favorite. You ever write, ever write comments to students and wonder if they read them? Drive your nuts. Drive. The only bad thing about the activity meeting is you can finally see how many students don't read your modules. But other than that, over here, I have a whole list of all the students. I have which students have read their reviews. We have it for assignments, for discussions. So if I notice a student that hasn't been reading it, I can select them, send them an email, and remind them to take a look at the this comment. The reviews. speech bubble means that it has been graded. The one with a yellow alert, it means the student has not read your comments. The one with a green, it means the student has gone in and read your comments. And so you, um, in um, assignments, let's look at a look at the grid guide quick. All of the columns are sortable, by the way. Okay. These don't have any speak bubbles. It means they haven't been graded yet. The rest have been. This student hasn't read it. The other two have. So you can see who has been read has, has gone in to read your review. Does it do a sort of total time they spent in the course? A uh, minute. Not a minute. In visits. We in terms when we were. Um, doing the user requirements and uh, trying to figure out time, performance, and storage, and cost, and all of that, and the reality of the benefit of that information and how reliable and useful it is. I mean, I turn my computer on and get distracted with a phone call, or I take the dog out for a walk and I forgot, and measuring those minutes and making judgment calls on those minutes. We saw that with IT Classic and other systems that we work with, and really you may draw conclusions from data that is not necessarily accurate. So we chose to not go down that road with, with minutes. But we do, we, let me go to the digits. I'll uh, show you useful information. End of, let's say, um, where am I? Our business, and you can sort them, and you can export all of this for the three or three week census. Uh, actually, East Los Angeles College, uh, their uh, admissions office accepts this for uh, drops, uh, you know, and so you can sort them by uh, size group. <coughs> and these people that haven't shown up, you just draw a line through it, and you, you know immediately who hasn't shown up. Okay. Um, let me see. And overview, this is what you were asking earlier. You can export all of that in an uh, Excel file. And this includes details for each student, what they have done, the date, number of posts, all of that. Okay. But the one thing that we didn't really that we didn't show is that it's available in every single part of um, activity meter. 
that makes it unique versus other tracking systems that are static data is that as you saw, it's interactive. Um, you can contact students. So here you have send a private message to those who have not started the quiz. The quiz is due tonight at midnight, and you look. You really want students to do well, and you are checking into your course, and you look only. 20% have done the quiz. If you really want your attention to be better and you want students to be successful, you click the button, send a private message to those who haven't started. And notice here, it brings up all of their emails for them. You can check send high priority, meaning to send it to their Gmail, sisters.edu email, Redwood.edu email or just in the site. But if they haven't been coming, you might as well just push a high priority. Say, hey, I see that you haven't started on the final. It's due by midnight. You know, there is still time to do well in the class. I am more and more using this functionality to help students succeed and say, you're going to be dropped if you don't show up. I think. You, know, <laughs> you know, it's not meant to do that. So that's the idea here. Now, although you're sending to the two, uh, seven students, they don't know. They see from your instructor to their name. They don't know you send it to many of them. You say, hey, I've missed you from class. And that's what sort of Yeah, we get some great discussions with faculty over how much do you do this sort of thing? How much do you do their responsibility? It becomes an interesting discussion. Uh, I but like good discussions, per se. Yeah. Like when I first start the semester, I expect them to turn the things in early, uh, you know, post early in the week and then respond later on in the week. I want them to get in that habit. But so the day before that first set of, you know, the way to get their highest marks, like I'll, I'll say like I'll post it on Monday. I want them to have the first response by Thursday. So Wednesday, I may send a PM the first couple of discussions just to remind them that they need to post by the next day to get maximum points. And it's so quick and easy. You know what's interesting is we use this functionality for our faculty who take this training. And we say, you know, hey, you know, by this Friday you really should have been finished with these hands-on activities. And so many are so appreciative. It's not really hand-holding folks. They're, they're, we are busy. We have busy lives. And they're like, oh my god, I, I spaced out. I know I'm ready for the course. And I, it's just another priority on top of many other things. They really appreciate it. Yeah. This would be personal upwards of three to four hours a yeah. turn per class. Trying to figure out who has in there, who's going to be the contact back. And then finding their emails. I mean, just to be able to say, hey, gather them all together. I love it. I appreciate at the beginning of the good features. Good features do this. But they take so much time if you don't have the functionality there. 11% of it. You want them. You know what's needed, but they do come. A big percentage comes when you prod them. Now, Thanks. teachers ask us for one more thing here, which I think is cool. And we always think of the students who are failing or are not coming, but you know the ones that are doing well. So we're going to add a feature that says private message to those who have. Well, to say thank you for posting early and you're doing great, and to really be nice to the ones who are eager, great learners. So that's coming in all of that. That'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but it is on our to-do list. Uh, sure. yeah. Any questions on that? I'm sorry. Any any other questions on activity meter? Yes. Um, no. Mm -hmm. is, that, is your financial aid or the financial aid office accept the activity meter report as substantiation yeah. for because it's financial aid to a student. Right, right. Because it's, it's not just that, uh, you see, it's um, actually more than your traditional numbers because it actually has activity, uh, uh, which is required now with the new financial aid requirement. Yes. It doesn't just show time and number of visits. It's just, uh, not only they have logged on, but they have done the work and on such day. Because they, number of posts, number of submissions, so actually the feds are really marking that. So the instructor still needs to have something in there that the student can do. Right. Well, the student, the instructor is only doing some and final, the data is limited. But those who, who have uh, a lot of uh, personal contact with students, discussions, and tests, and assignments, and projects, all of that is collected in activity meter. 
so it, it helps a lot. Virtual is the we're really excited about is the A2 Zen Touch mobile device. Uh, A2 has created a, for an application that anyone using the A2 system can download for free the Apple Store. Um, we're talking to some people from some other systems that pay extra for it. It's, it's, it's totally there and, and available to anyone. So you download this application and it allows you to stay in touch with your class. And I made a real conscious decision here. It doesn't have you create content, grade assignments, because on a little screen like this, that's a challenge. The focus of this was to do four things. Be able to do announcements, chats, discussions, and private messages. All the things that allow you to stay in touch with students. Mm -hmm. A2s doesn't use email. Everything's done on a private message system that's internal. It's internally saved by A2s. So you have it for years. You can send email, though. You, you can send email. Yeah. But I, I never, I always ask my students to do private messages so it doesn't co-mingle with all the other emails that I'm getting. Everything, and we can share with them list what's like, but everything on a private message, you know, gets to stay. I can now, and where before, if I want to send a student a private message, I have to log into the class, open up the class, and now I can just do it on my phone. So, this is the opening page. You log in, and this is what you get. You get, a, you get to see all of your classes. I just did the screenshot last night, and unfortunately, I'm finishing, these classes finish today, these start the, in a week and a half. So what happened, um, you'll be able to see how many users are online. If you have any new private messages, are there any new posts in any of the discussions, and how many students have recently visited. And you can go to any of those uh, classes that you want. And your site, when you log to in touch, your sites are listed in the same order that they're listed in when you go to myatoots.org. And and you can order them in the, in the same way. Uh, visits to in touch count in activity meter. You can accept the syllabus from in touch, it will be there as well. This viewing your modules, all of that can is tracked. Um, you know, I was telling over uh, Jim over dinner that this is so, so useful that I actually, in our July development meeting, I want to tell my team, we need to redo the opening, my uh, dashboard of ATUS because it's just as a calendar and just some information. I want to see immediately what's happening in all my classes now. So they don't know that yet, but that's what I'm going to ask them to do next because it's so useful. You know, immediately you know, you don't need to bother in class and activity. Here, there is work for you to respond to. You know, so that's kind of neat. So next screen. <clears throat> so here I went to one of the sites, and here I was able to find us. And, I, and it starts off by showing the activity. There's buttons oh, across no. the bottom, and the first button is activity. This is like the the uh, activity meter. meter, only it's the mobile version. And I can go to each student and see what they've done. Second one, it will come up will be the forums, the actual discussion forums. And so here I have the discussion forums. These are my last couple of discussions, final project. I can see how many people uh, responded here. If there's a bl the blue dot suggests I may need to check that. You have a red dot. That is. Them. They are also uh, marked as red in a So it's really all of the functionality has been merged with what? Uh, within the discussion, these are, could be individual forums. And these are some forums that are going on. And here's our announcements. We call it news here because we didn't have enough room for announcements. So we put word news there. And these are all different. These are the, a list of the most recent announcements. You can scroll down and see all the announcements. A student can click one of these, and that could be one of the announcements. They're going to be able to see the most current announcement. And you can delete those. You can edit them. You can add new ones. So if you're on the road and you need to post an announcement to your class, say, hey, class, I'm at a conference, you can do it right from your iPhone. Mark, I sent private messages last night from her, uh, I was from the phone, I'm like, she could text me, you know. It was a little faster for me to respond because I didn't want to log on. I know. <laughs> My wife likes to drive, so she doesn't want to text me. My wife likes to drive, and so when we go places, she likes to take her car, so she drives and I can be on the phone doing business. But actually, I didn't think of it. I didn't have to log on. See, I have to learn that I can use it because it's so much faster than logging on to a because you're always logged on. To go there and send a private message back. 
This here is a list of uh, private messages, a recent one for me. This shows that I've responded to it. Mm -hmm. The other ones are just for information. You want to tell me something? Right. This is one of my favorites, and I wanted to show you that this was a student of mine. What? I, there's a variety of excuses I'll accept. This is one of them. She just had a baby. Um, I'm being discharged last week to deliver a baby girl this weekend. I think that's a fairly valid excuse for not <laughs> doing the discussion a little later. Yeah, well, here's what I always do. Here's what I do. I, and, and I do this because I want to share it with the class. It's a good way of you know, bonding on it. I, I ask her, lovely, send me a picture of the baby so I can share it. So then she sent me this that had three, uh, three. So I clicked one of those. Here's the baby. <laughs> uh, I'm a very trusting person, you know. I, I'm, I'm fairly trusting on that. And if they went to this much effort, God bless them, you know. So anyway, so but the idea was I can, this, all, this is all screenshots from the phone, from the mobile device. So that change happens within the mobile device. Mm -hmm. That's backed up as part of your course archive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's instant. The minute you, I can go here and post a message right now to Margie, and you log on to my YouTube, she will see it there. I can send a link to a YouTube video, embed a YouTube video. I mean, anything that is supported by the mobile device, PDFs that can be opened, all of that, it, all of that is supported. Okay. So you read something here, it's reflected as well there. It's, it's, I mean, we are working to use, you know, technical language API, so it goes back and forth. <coughs> Yeah. And right now, this is only available on Apple. I know. And the number one, and the only, I have to say, we have four and a half star, four and a half stars of, at the Apple Store. And the only minus is, when is it going to be available on Android? And that's not the next thing. What we wanted to do is to have it mature enough in, in on the iPhone so that we're not doing development into different platforms. Because once it's really reached maturity here, uh, then we can rewrite it for the Android and not have to be adding a picture here, now we have to edit over here, and it's crazy. You're going to move the next second. That we've really found that everything integrated really depends on having an email or anything else outside, is that when students come with complaints, and those are all I'm going to get up to me, there's no problem. Actually, I don't want to name the college, but there is a civil rights uh, lawsuit going on right now with a student that's in, um, that uh, complained for um, discrimination, accessibility, and that supposedly um, he had requested accommodations. And uh, the, the civil rights office asked for all the private communication. It's all in AP. Um, and we gave them access to the student and the instructor account. You can see all of it. And was able to clear uh, the college because of that data that was there. So it's really, a, it's all archived. It is interesting how now the students know that they're also using, they're requesting that uh, archives be restored. Before, as far as the faculty can do that and say, oh, oh, by the way, you know, you didn't complete all these archiving tests, and here's how we can see that. Right. Now it's coming back and the students are saying, we know that there's information in there that will support us. Right. Yeah. You know, we, actually, we actually tell students that, you know, the, the faculty are not really snooping behind your back. What you see in course map, the data, your dates, number of visits, all of that, that's what your faculty see, your instructor see. We're not really doing anything illegal. You're in the class, we know you're in the class, you're not in the class, we know you're not in the class, and you see that as well as well as the instructor. Yeah, students are becoming a lot more savvy consumers. Right, right, they are. And they're, you know, they, they, read, they read their syllabus as a contract, they want it fulfilled, and yeah. The, the final part here is uh, this is the course map, and the, like the course map they have in their online class, they have a version of it here. If they finish the assignment, they'll have the check there for it, so they can see from their mobile device what they're missing, what they need to do, what the next step is. Uh, instructors have activity meter in, um, in CAPS, so they see where students are and what they're doing. Students have course map, so they see what they're doing. So that's the equivalent of that. Oh, students don't have instructors. No, no, they, they do. Have. They do have it. Right, they have in touch. Yeah, and we actually make a course map. They don't see it. Uh, activity yeah, meter. Activity meter is the instructor's way of seeing what students are doing. Students have course map. Actually, we have we released this in um, March, and we have 5,500 unique visits, something like um, 5,800 downloads. 
but about 5,500 unique. We, we can track visits via to A2 to via the iPhone. It's pretty cool. I thought you were going to say users, but I was going to say 5,501 if I just downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, um, this, this is the student screen because well, this is the. <coughs> The yeah. student screen has map here, and, it, and as soon as they log in, this is what they see. Right. I can click the next button, and that button you can click. Faculty member has activity, so that right. becomes the difference. Right. And those are the three big additions that we've had over this last year. Let me back up a moment before we summarize. But before we summarize, we're going to back up just a moment. In touch? Any questions on in touch? Good question. I use it mainly when, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, when my wife has me shopping with her and she's trying on a million things, I can go to class. I'm bad. I do it on my dog walks. <laughs> they call me. My daughter is like, Mom, and I'm trying not to. But it, it can be Is there any risk to the front dog right here? Cell phone gets flight. Well, there is another like timeout. If you leave in the lab and you leave your browser on, we have an uh, activity uh, timeout, uh, 60 minutes. The same with this. Uh, it will um, uh, log you off. Uh, but the, also, as a user, whether you're Facebook or you're Skype or whatever, in your settings, you can choose to be always on. I always choose to be always on because I don't want to have to log on every time. So you control your phone. And, but it has to log in. And yeah, it has to log on, but you can choose to be always on, which is nice, I think. It's something, you know, you have your password, okay? Hopefully your password is phone. And so if it becomes inactive, it turns off and your password is there. You know, it, it's really a user choice. I, I made her do this, that, uh, and we were just going to do the three tools, but I just want to introduce you real quick to the, to the team that does this. Um, it's more than just software. There's a core team. Okay, go ahead and run through this. So you need support team. This is this is Glenn who designed the the InTouch, the whole application. He loved working on it. He wouldn't release it because he kept finding one more thing he wanted to add to it. It was meant to be a Christmas present. It went March because. He's just a perfectionist. So why do we tell them, look, Lynn, 2.0, stop. You can come with the 2.0 later. We'll give them something later. Yeah. By the way, Glenn Golden is, is our Tupac tech and really a great thinker and visionary. He, um, uh, well, we borrowed him from the University of Michigan to uh, help us with the testing engine of Sakai. That was, we actually ended up getting rid of it. It was so problematic. And we got to borrow him for two years from Michigan to help us redesign a new uh, testing engine. And he loved working with us as he resigned from Michigan and we hired him for ages. So he's, uh, he's just great. And helping out, is her, she has an, another whole list of programmers right. that work full time. Yeah. So I guess what I wanted to say there is we have a team of engineers dedicated to responding to faculty. Uh, we don't, uh, you know, it's, it's a huge, it's always evolving from um, requests from teachers every day. And, and there's a, a core of trainers, I mean, right. unfortunately, one of them. But it's people, and but to become a trainer, you have to go through a whole process of being an instructor, like an apprentice instructor, have a DE background. So all the trainers have had some DE leadership background on the campus. They've taken courses in online pedagogy. They've done intern in different training sessions. And they've led all, a variety of training sessions. We actually have two here, Margie and Viviana, two of our certified trainers that by training to faculty throughout California all year round. So as, as people want to become involved with this, there's a lot of training, one-on-one right. -on -one training right. provided. Thank you. Thank you so much. As now if there are any questions that you may have on... But all the ones that we can answer, that always Yeah, please let us know. Can you back me down? Oh, so... Yeah. And I have my card. If you have any questions that you think of later, Hope you like what you see, Versity College. Harnell just joined us. Yeah. They were using e-college.